Today, I'm gonna to show you how to record acoustic guitars so that you can stop sending me poorly recorded acoustics that are impossible to fix. I love you, but let's learn some better ways to do this. Okay. All right, so let's go over three different ways to mic and record the acoustic to find a unique sound that will fit the song that you're recording. Okay, one of the mistakes that I see made very often is people pick a mic that is super bright right from the start. And sometimes that's appropriate, sometimes it's not. It depends on what the song calls for. Does the song call for the brightness from the acoustic? If not, now the acoustic is chewing up a lot of that higher register with the strumming or the picking or whatever's going on on the acoustic. Also, a lot of the times the acoustic guitar actually gives you all the brightness that you need from the percussiveness from the strings. And if it's already a bright acoustic guitar, you don't necessarily need a super bright mic. Yes, know what the song is calling for know what you should add to it and then use that to sort of help you with the decision on the mics if you just have one mic or two mics then try both I mean what's it it takes five minutes to switch the mic out and try another one 15 seconds of it on one mic swap the mic record 15 seconds on the other one and then just listen to both of the recordings and say oh this one's clearly better and then and then do that Another thing I see people do a lot, and I personally did when I first started recording, was I put my mic directly over the sound hole of the acoustic because that gave me a lot of, of the lower frequencies, which also you don't need on acoustic guitar most of the time. If you're looking for more of a full body sound on the acoustic, that might not be the way to go. There's other ways to get it and you don't want there to be too much of that woofiness coming from the guitar because then when you, you're gonna have to roll it off and then you're rolling off some of the nice mid tones of the guitar and then it's just, just, just hold on. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you, hold on. All right, so I'm gonna place the SM7 about two to four inches off of the 12th fret of the neck. I like this placement because it eliminates too much of the picking action from the guitar pick, and it also eliminates a lot of the woofiness that comes from the sound hole in the acoustic guitar. It's also a great mic position if you plan on doubling your acoustic guitars. One, two, one, two, three, four. All right, for the second technique, we're still gonna close mic the guitar with the same microphone, the same way that we did on the first technique, but now we're gonna add in a second microphone that's going to be placed just over the guitar player's shoulder. It's gonna be over their right shoulder if they're a right-handed guitar player, vice versa if they're a left-handed guitar player. Now, this mic is going to add a couple things. It's gonna add clarity and some depth to the recording, which is going to be useful in a number of different ways. What's cool about this position is you're gonna get more of a player's perspective as we're literally putting a microphone right next to the player's ear. So the microphone is gonna be capturing basically exactly what the player is hearing as they play, which is a lot different than what you hear if you put your ear right next to the 12th fret of a guitar. This position is super great for more broken down arrangements where there's not a whole lot of other instruments going on in the mix. The mic I'm using over the shoulder is a WA87 and it's a large diaphragm condenser. So I, I would definitely recommend using at the very least a large diaphragm condenser over the shoulder if you have one or can. And uh, it doesn't have to be an 87 if you have other options, obviously pick your, whichever one sounds best or whichever one is your favorite. This position is super cool and it adds a really unique quality to the recording. So it's a good one to have in the bag.
name drop alert. Okay, so this third technique is a technique that I picked up off of the engineer Ed Cherney. We were doing a session with Stephen Stills and Kenny Wayne Shepherd. All right, name dropping finished. Hey, no barking. All right, so the way we did it this day is we used a U47 in Omni, placed a little over a foot away from the guitar. It was going through a Neve console, Neve My Pre, straight into a silver 1176 that had fairly aggressive compression with a fast attack and a fast release straight to the tape machine. So the idea being you're putting some energy into the guitar performance straight to tape. There's no undoing it and you're getting more room than you are getting a close recording quality of the guitar. This in my opinion is actually a little more of a natural sound and it works really really great for a guitar riffs or uh, melodies or transitions. It could also be great for a rhythm guitar that's just going straight through the song. So I was really impressed by this when I saw Ed do it and I've used it a couple times since then at a few different studios. I'm gonna try it today using my WA87 mic. I'm gonna throw it in Omni and then I'm gonna run it through my WA273 mic pre which is a clone of a Neve mic pre. And then I'm just gonna use the Universal Audio 1176 plugin through console uh, recording into Pro Tools. So this is probably as close as I can get to emulating it, but so if it does sound cool, then you can at the very least have another placement and technique in your back pocket to use on a session if you, if you just, uh, if you want to. Wow, that last one is probably the most fun as a guitar player to play guitar through or with or using, whatever. I don't know. I love it. It's definitely a cool technique to use when you're recording acoustic. It's great for licks and melodies and really guitar-driven stuff. The technique that you wind up using is ultimately up to you. To me, the cool thing is just knowing different ways to get what you're looking for. And of course, the more equipped you are, the better the results are going to be. A couple questions for you. Which technique is your favorite? And if what you use is not in this video, what, what, how do you record it? And what's, what's the right way? What did I get wrong? Let me know down in the comments. Hopefully this will help you with your acoustic recordings and just generally recording in the future or at least add some new tools to your toolbox. Do me a favor and just smash the living daylights out of that like button down right there, right, right there, wherever it is. Just, just smash it, crush it absolutely demolish it it's for the youtube algorithm we have to just keep feeding it we have to give it what it wants it makes both of us happy it gives you the videos that you like and it gives me the viewers that i think actually care about the stuff that i talk about which is you
so smash the like button. Also subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of stuff and you want to see when the next video is uploaded, hit the little notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I will, of course, see you in the next video. Peace. Also, one last thing. If you know somebody who you're maybe you're working with or an artist or somebody who's recording their acoustic guitars and could use could use some helpful information on how to do a better job um, send this video to them share this video with them share it with anyone who you know who records or is looking to record and and help them out because uh, let's let's be real we all know somebody who could who could improve and let's help them <laughs> okay <laughs>